Wonderful dog. I think he's possessed. A real piece of work. Hurry up, let's die. You're the big, you're the boss, Dr. Frankenstein. So come, let's go to a place of authority. This video is brought to you by Patreon. Patreon, are you saying a shrimp fried this rice? One of the many things that defined the Nickelodeon of the 1990s was a pivot to creator-driven programming, shows with distinct personalities delivering strong visions. This was an effect of Laybourne's tenure as head of the channel, but it took a while for it to take hold. You first have to make a channel that creators would want to make shows for. But now that Double Dare and Nick Jr. and the Kids' Choice Awards were getting eyes on the channel, a lot of weird creative people were looking at Nickelodeon as a potential platform for their various idiosyncrasies. This is how we got the original three Nicktoons, The Adventures of Pete and Pete, Wienerville, and so on. But not all of these projects worked. A lot of these creator-driven programs never got past the pitch stage, even fewer got past the pilot stage, and even fewer of those pilots ever got airtime. Consider Christmas in Tattertown, created by 70s animation maverick Ralph Bakshi. A pilot of what might have been the first Nicktoon, it never turned into a full series. And if it wasn't a seasonal half hour in a time when Nickelodeon didn't have a lot of holiday content, it might not have aired as it did, as a one-off television special. Christmas in Tattertown is probably the most well-known example of a Nickelodeon pilot turned TV special, but it wasn't the only one. And I want to profile another today, one that's been picking at my brain since I learned of its existence. Only airing twice, on March 4th and March 9th, 1990, today we're looking at Rich Hall's TV Dinner Party, and I just don't understand. Hi, I'm Rich Hall. You know, any discriminating kid will tell you food always tastes better when it's served on a cob. That's why I've created new Rich's Food Cobs. Yes, it's the all-natural adhesive cob that makes every food an adventure. Even raisins. Boy, that's good eating. I like lima beans on a cob. Yep, any time's cob time. You can eat cereal right off the cob. Mm -hmm. TV Dinner Party stars comedian Rich Hall as a wacky inventor who built his sidekick, Larry, a robotic dog made out of kitchen appliances. Larry gets a spot on Letterman for his stupid pet trick segment, but the robo-dog runs out of batteries right before it's time to go on stage. Larry feels dejected, but Rich and the three children who hang around him throw Larry a party and he feels better. Larry, everybody here loves you. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. We don't care if you're metal. No? No. You're the real thing, Larry. Really? That's right, Larry. Yeah. Wow. Huh. I am? Hey, Rich. What? Kiss me. <laughs> That's a pretty straightforward plot that takes all of three minutes. The actual bulk of TV Dinner Party is a string of weird visuals, non sequitur gags, and a subplot about making fun of hippie stereotypes that were already tired by 1990. Oh, your space is just out of sight. <laughs> Did you have it tested for radon? Mother. Oh, oh, look, honey, we don't want to cut into anyone's quality time here. No, no. we just came by to drop off Cassiopeia's Crystal. <laughs> oh, that's her real name. She's the shining little constellation of our life. <laughs> the hippie parents were played by Jay Martle, future Key and Peele producer, and Cheryl Blaylock, Eureka from Eureka's Castle. Speaking of, Larry was voiced by Jim Cropa, Batley from Eureka's Castle. The jokes in TV Dinner Party feel especially random. Here's Rich's new invention, sticky corn cob that you can eat other food on. Here's a cake that's gushing fluid for some reason. Here's three ladies who sing the plot like the muses in Hercules, and I don't know why we need this in the show. So Larry's all charged up. Man, you should have seen him go. Went and got himself booked on the Letterman show. Gone to New York City. Thinks he's cool, yes sir. Do a stupid pet trick with a food processor. Gonna make himself famous. Financially secure. Open up a Tiffany. Shopping mall tour. Yeah! 
Maybe we'll get a discount. You wish. And then there's a flashback sequence where Rich remembers his time in a competitive Scrabble League, which is the only time the special goes for any kind of cohesive joke that isn't just LOL random. Squat! S-Q-U-A-T! Triple letter play, triple word value! So, they won the championship? Well, not exactly. We haven't squat is fine. Unless, of course, the other team has deadly. Deadly squat, right. This was the only time the special got a chuckle out of me. Everything else is just bizarre. But then again, Rich Hall was kind of a bizarre guy. Hall had started doing stand-up comedy in the late 70s, but found decent success in television in the early 1980s, being a writer and performer on The David Letterman Show. No, not late night. Letterman had a morning talk show first. You tap the toes a little bit and, and just kind of wait for that music to course right through you. There you go. Then you throw yourself down on your back, wiggle a little, squirm a little, and you're ready to bounce. Hall was also a regular on the sketch comedy show Fridays and joined the cast of Saturday Night Live for a single season. His biggest television success, however, came from the HBO comedy show Not Necessarily the News, where Hall ran a reoccurring segment on Sniglets, words that should be in the dictionary, but aren't. Now, script is anything that's sat in the same position for at least 50 years. Like those bottles of hair tonic you always find in barber shops. L acceleration is the mistaken notion that the more you press the elevator button, the faster the elevator will arrive. <laughs> However, this seldom works. Rich Hall quickly became the Sniglets guy in the American consciousness, with several Sniglet books becoming major bestsellers. This wasn't a great thing for Hall, as that worked well for a book or a segment on a larger sketch comedy show, but didn't necessarily translate to his stand-up comedy. It was a weird um, kind of success backfire kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, they were popular, but they didn't work on the stage. Like right. I could do them right now, and I could probably do two that you would go, oh, that's, that's kind of funny, but not real. It was, yeah. it was a textual thing, right? It was yeah. like, these work as a book. But of course, the club owners are going, hey, the guy who wrote Sniglets, he's, he's playing this weekend. And I'd walk out on stage and I'd be like 10 minutes in and then you'd start hearing it, Sniglets, Sniglets. <laughs> and I, go, I, I don't really, they're not gonna work, people. No, oh, come on, do some Sniglets. And it, it, it was really, and then I'd get angry. And yeah. talking, Fuck you, I'm not doing the Sniglets. And then the guy why is he so angry? We just want to hear his funny <laughs> words. It's really not easy to pin down Hall's comedy in the 80s. A little bit observational humor, a little bit absurdism, a little bit prop comedy, a little bit wordplay. Hall was constantly experimenting. I try to reduce the audience to a huge amount of ectoplasmic waste, then raise them out of it. That represents a challenge for me. I try to use visuals and props in an artistic sense because they have more impact. I would describe it as found object comedy or performance art. And it's in this experimental, I don't want to be the Sniglets guy stage that Hall pitched TV Dinner Party to Nickelodeon as early as 1988, describing the project to one newspaper as a cross between dinner at eight and Southern white trash cooking. I have no idea what that means. Dinner at Eight is a 1933 film about rich people having a dinner party and a struggling actor who commits suicide. That's a that's not what's in TV Dinner Party. Was this supposed to be a comedy show about food at one point? I guess there are a solid amount of food jokes in the special. We've got the sticky corn cob, the exploding cake, and the final gag, where our cast chows down on the fried up remains of cartoon characters. Are you hungry? Oh, I'm ravished. What do you got? What have I got? Oh, maybe just your favorite. Huh? Maybe just a little rack o' Garfield. Oh, huh? look at mm. that. Wow, <laughs> that's a beauty. Oh, and ooh, Smurf kebabs. Oh, my favorite. Oh, oh Rich, you shouldn't have. There's a certain mid-80s garbage pail kids mad balls edge to this gag. Let's kill Garfield and eat him but it's the only gag of its kind. The episode just doesn't coalesce into anything solid. It's hard to imagine what a full series would have looked like, or what would make it appeal to kids. 
Rich Hall, who was in his mid-30s when this was filmed, is the central figure, he's the main character. And for a wacky inventor character, he's far too deadpan. His inventions are weird and silly, I guess, but the guy himself is presenting the show like a fifth grade teacher. He's no Doc Brown. The child characters are undefined and mostly in the background. You'd think you'd want to have them drive the story and have Hall be a silly supporting character like Mr. Ernst on Hey Dude, but that's not what we get. Larry the Robot Dog is absent for more than half the running time. What exactly is meant to appeal to kids here? If I was to compare TV Dinner Party to any other Nickelodeon show, it'd probably be Turkey Television, another adult-led collage of random comedy. And that comparison probably did the pilot no favors, as Jerry Laybourne came to hate turkey television. It just wasn't the direction Nickelodeon was heading in. Not that the shows they were making in the 1990s weren't silly, and some occasionally dived into absurdist comedy, but pure absurdism, well, that was left to basically just Ren and Stimpy. These days, Rich Hall has found a second life as a comedian in the UK, making frequent appearances on panel shows like QI, and having sort of become America's representative comedian across the Atlantic. He's also done a number of pretty good documentaries for the BBC on Hollywood representation of American life, including Native American representation. Here on the Navajo land, the word for thank you is ahihet. Could also apologize for the 500 years of abuse and humiliation and systematic displacement, but it probably wouldn't do any good. But there's no word in Navajo for sorry. TV Dinner Party is just one fairly minor hat for a guy who wore a lot of different hats. But while its content didn't suit the channel that well, the creator-driven process of it all would be. Even the failed projects have a place in history. In fact, it wasn't the only television special hoping to become a full series in 1990. There was this one about a summer camp, but that's for another video. Nick, 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 Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to support Nick Nacks and other Pop Arena projects, consider contributing to my Patreon. Every dollar goes to production values, research materials, and asparagus. Coat them in olive oil and salt, put them in the toaster oven, 15 minutes later you got good eating. You can also support the channel by liking the video, leaving a comment, subscribing, hitting that bell icon for notifications, sending a one-time donation through PayPal or Coffee, and sharing knickknacks with all your friends. Thank you again, and remember, Black Lives Matter.